Okay, and we're live. Welcome. I am Nikki with Music by Nikki, and I'm going to try this again. <laughs> okay. So I'm having some audio difficulties because it's either coming out of one ear or it doesn't come out at all. So I don't know why. So that's the fun of learning. So I'm going to see if uh, you guys can hear me. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, I'm, I'm going to let someone know before I do another... Uh, 20 minute video that didn't have any sound come out so that was fun anyway let me just talk again about this subject really quick so i left my um my phone in the other room because now i really need someone to tell me if this is working i wish you could test live without um going live so if you have tips for audio and stuff just let me know um i'm, I'm trying my best here okay so do this again how much should you practice okay how much should you practice all right, so we're going to talk about, uh, in this discussion, we're going to talk about practicing for young children. We're going to practicing at any age, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced, okay? Or maybe even going into professional. We're going to talk about how much you need to practice, and hopefully you guys can hear me now. If you can hear me, please give me a thumbs up <laughs> or something <laughs> because I'm really trying to test this out. Okay. So we're talking about how much to practice, okay? Rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. Practice on the days that you eat. We're going to be talking specifically about violin here. Um, so let's just head right into it. So practicing, it is better to practice. And with my students, it's, it's better to practice a few minutes a day than multiple. Like, okay, it's better to practice a few minutes a day than saying like 30 minutes every other day or an hour every other day. Okay, this happens a lot. Frequency is very important when it comes to practicing. Okay, so you want to practice like every day so your muscles remember what you're doing. Okay, because it's a muscle memory instrument. So we're trying to train our muscles to remember where the notes are and to hit them very well every time. So say you have a five-year-old student, okay? Your five-year-old student should be practicing about f like 15-ish minutes a day is fine, okay? If they like it more, practice more, okay? But don't push them. So there's a big balance with practice. We don't want the student to negatively respond to practice and we don't want to like overdo it to where they feel like they're going to burn out, okay? So I personally don't use negative reinforcement when it comes to practice, okay? Like if you don't practice, I'm going to take away your iPad. I don't use that route unless it's necessary. Like that's your, you know, that's, that's your business as a parent to do that. You know, I get that. I think the positive reinforcement works a little better, okay? So I use rewards a lot, incentives, but you don't want to overdo incentives, okay? Because then the student won't practice also because they're like, well, why should I practice? You haven't given me my treat that you usually do, so why should I, okay? So there is a balance in that, okay? It, it has to be a, a ritual thing. It's got to be an everyday ritual thing. Now, of course, there are times where you're sick. There are times where you can't practice. Okay. Uh, leave me a comment below or give me a thumbs up, please, if you can hear me. Okay. I wanna, I'm trying to test the audio here. Um, and educate at the same time. <laughs> okay. So, um, as, as the practicing continues, it's a skill, right? It's a, practicing is a skill. Practicing is a muscle, okay? So as I have said before, I'm going to repeat myself a few times, um, I really like the violin as far as practicing because what you get in, you get out, right? Any kind of practice is, is good practice, even though you should be doing what I'm like assigning. <laughs> Um, even if you want to practice your own stuff, that's better than nothing. Okay. So the worst case, worst case scenario is when a student says they haven't practiced at all the past week, zero. Okay. Zero practice is never fun for anybody. It's not fun for me as the teacher because we have to review. I mean, it doesn't matter for me. I get paid either way, but it's not fun. Okay. It's not as rewarding. Okay. It is rewarding when you practice properly and you get something out of it. Okay. Now I know things happen. I'm a very forgiving teacher, but at the same time, like it's just so much more fun when you practice it and you succeed. Okay. And that's for any age. So that, 
that's really an, an important um, thing to think about there. So you kind of want to think of it as the cliche, use it or lose it. Okay. When I was in basketball, when I was, you know, like 10, my coach was like, if you don't practice for three days on your own individual uh, exercises, layups, things like that, drills, if you don't practice for three days straight, it's almost like you didn't practice for two weeks. Your body forgets it. Your body forgets it. That's why some of these young kids can do so well because their body's remembering it more than their brains are, like, you know, intellectually. But I like to connect to those things. So it's really just a, it's really a balance, okay? And also, you don't want to separate practice and lessons, okay? So you don't want to be like, oh, I love my lessons, but I hate to practice. Try not to, try to avoid that period, okay? Make it cohesive, like, you know, we're all, you know, this is all of it, okay? It is the parent, it is the child, it is the practice, it is the lessons, it's the teacher. And when all those things work together harmoniously, you get some good musicians, okay? And they last. That's another thing, all right? So, it's not like a video game, all right? So, say you're in a video game, you're playing, you did an hour's worth of stuff, okay? And then the game doesn't save your progress, okay? We've all been there. It's very frustrating, right? Really annoying. It can make you angry. Practice is not like that, okay? You practice for an hour. Even if you practice some things incorrectly, you're still gaining a lot, okay? So there is like a timeliness. The more time you put into it, the more you're going to get out. But you can't push the student too much. So you kind of have to analyze your child, right? So think about this, the subject that your child's really good at. Say they're good in English. And kind of see like why they're good at that subject and then maybe kind of implement those practice techniques similar to that. Okay? We want to make it fun, um, but also repetitive. Okay, you want to repeat things very often. And this is where we can struggle with students, um, especially young ones, because they don't want to repeat things, right? Young kids don't want to repeat things. They just want to move on to the next thing. So that's part of our job, right? That's part of the challenge is to make repetition fun. Okay, so little tips, all right, little tips. Um, always take breaks. Breaks are really important. You want to, like, shake out your muscles, um, things like that. Um, you want to shake out your hands, things like that. Tension and violin do not mix, right? So you want to practice being relaxed. You want to concentrate on relaxation, which I know is kind of contradictory, but it's true. So you want to practice on relaxing. Um, another thing, a practice journal very helpful all ages okay now a five-year-old is not going to write in their journal oh my practice session went so great today no that would be the parent um but say i like i have like i'll give an assignment book for my students you know where it'll be like this is what we practice today this is what you need to review this is what you need to focus on after that the parent could easily say this is how the practice session went okay and i've had parents do that it's very helpful um, recording the lessons, also helpful. Taking pictures of how I uh, describe the technique is also very helpful. Um, what else? There is so much. There is so, there's so much. So yeah, you want to practice? You want to practice daily. And you want to practice on relaxing. Okay? So... What are some other uh, what are some other common questions? So if, if you're like a high school student, you should be practicing probably like a minimum of an hour. And then, but say you're a very dedicated high school student and you already plan to go into a music major, you need to be practicing even more than that. College music majors practice on an average of four hours a day. Professional symphony musicians practice on an average of six to eight hours a day. Okay, I get a lot of my practice session in because I teach every day, so I'm physically playing every day. That's helpful. Now you should also set a part time to practice individually on your instrument separately so like even though I teach every day I'm not practicing on like my you know super concertos like I need to uh, hours every day okay so physical um issues can come into play for practice right you always want to shake out and take breaks because 
tension does not mix because if you practice with tension, you're going to get things like tendonitis. You're going to get carpal tunnel, all these things, or your, your hands are just going to hurt. You know, it may not, you know, evolve into something very bad, but it could. So parents have to, especially when the kids are young, you know, go in and hold the student's hand like very floppy make sure it's very you know the palms are very relaxed as far as like the violin goes you want to check on those things as a parent because we want to implement those habits as soon as possible that's why practice is so important so i'm gonna repeat you don't want it to be separate things you don't want to be like the lessons and then the practice right so when i was a kid and i started violin when i was 10 i was like oh mom i just wanted to play the violin i didn't want lessons <laughs> i definitely didn't want to practice right let that go, you know, and it took me a while to grow into a proper practice technique if I even ever really got there, you know, um, but I definitely know it does make good practice. So, you know, you want, you want to fo focus on that as well. So I, I think positive reinforcement works. I think instead of works, but don't go overboard with it and make it fun. Um, so when you start your practice sessions, you want to start with tuning your instrument and then you want to start playing some open strings and then you want to start with scales. OK, and then you kind of then you can play something that you want to play. That's awesome. Right. Take time to play stuff you want to play. Right. That makes you happy. You want to make up some songs, make up some songs. Um, but you better practice what I told you to as well. Right. Because like the practice has purpose. OK. So you want to stick with that. You want to stick with that and maybe you learn something new from a practice session. That's always really fun when you have a new um, like awakening after a practice session, right? So make today the day to learn something new. Um, and that would be something you could jot down in your practice journal. Okay, so I can tell when students have practiced. I can tell when they haven't practiced. I can tell when they've practiced and they did it incorrectly. Okay, so all these things teachers can tell. So, um, that pretty much, I think, covers a lot of it, all right? Repetition, long drills, and the frequency, okay? So, essentially, you want to practice scales, you want to practice etudes, you want to practice repertoire, you want to practice sight reading, uh, and you want to practice technique, you want to practice all those things, and even if it's at a young age, right? So, we just, we just kind of squish it for a younger age for me. So, especially with violin, you want to practice intonation and bow strokes, okay? Those are really important things. So, if you want to learn more about that, you, of course, can book a lesson with me. So, I do have spots. I have about six one-hour spots left, and I'm also taking 30-minute sessions. You can um, book me for a free 15-minute consultation, or you can just message me, okay? You can um, find down the link below to book me if you want some new lessons. I'm um, taking a lot of virtual lessons and I'm taking the occasional in-person students with a mask, okay? So how much do I have to practice? Easy answer, um, if you're under the age of 12, let's say 30 minutes a day, okay? But if you're good at it, keep going. Just don't overdo it, right? If you overdo it, we don't want our muscles to hurt. Sore is good, pain is bad. All right, sore just means you, you know, you get to put some work in, okay? But pain means tension. And if you keep repeating that, you're going to get some bad technique and you're going to hurt yourself. And sometimes you hurt yourself and you don't go back the way you were before, okay? So really important, um, especially with the, with the kids, okay? So kids are different, you know? So some, some are like all over the place, but they're tense when they grab their instrument or like, the, or, or they're the opposite. They're like all over the place and then they're very relaxed as soon as you put an instrument in their hands, you know? So you kind of want to like evaluate that on your own and see how, um, how they, how they receive the instrument. Okay. And then just work through it. Okay. It, it is a process. Okay. The practice process is different than the lessons. Okay. So practicing is a huge issue. Um, but it can be a beautiful thing. And when you practice something, you get really good at it. That sense of fulfillment is just so awesome. Okay. It's a really good feeling when you're as a parent and your, your child is actually practicing on their own. You didn't even have to ask them. They shut their door and they practice. You can hear them working on their instrument. And then you let them do that for like 30 minutes. They come out and then they perform a song for you. You know, it could be Mary had a little lamb. It could be Vivaldi. It doesn't matter. 
Um, and then it's like, wow, you know, so that's the fun part of practice. Okay. It's like, as a musician, you're also a magician, right? So you're practicing something behind the scenes. So when you present it and you perform it, it's, it's magical. It's fun. Even if you mess up. So, but I tell my students, you know, we're practicing not to mess up. Um, and I'm very strict with practicing intonation with my students, especially for violin. So I um, always tell them to use their chromatic tuner when they practice to check their pitches um, because they, they, they need to do, they need to be good at that. Everybody does. So um, you never stop intonation practice. It never really ends. Or sight reading for that matter, you know, or different skills. So practice is a skill and it is a muscle that we need to build. So nurture it and it will grow. I have had a parent, you know, and they're like, the kid just doesn't want to practice. They just don't want to practice or they just want to do what they want to do. Um, and then I'm like, well, that, you know, that's something we need to work on. And then the parent goes, well, isn't that your job? That was an interesting day for me, you know? So it's a mixture, you know, I have, I have a lot of students, right? So I, I try to implement all these skills into all of my students and they do pretty good. A lot of them listen to me very well, but some of them don't, and then they, they don't end up staying, right? Because like they don't, um, commit proper things that lead to success. And as my personal way of teaching, I like to do that as friendly and nice as possible, right? Um, I like to implement kind of hard, strict technique, but I try to make it fun, okay? And that works for me, okay? Because kids like a challenge, but they don't like a challenge they don't understand, right? So you got to make it easy for them, you know, like practice these pages and then do some, then you pick, you know, and like, so like, I'll, I'll be like, okay, pick a song you want to do first, right? And then they'll play it. And then I'll be like, okay, now it's my turn. I'm going to give you the hard one, you know, and then we work on the hard thing. And then I'm like, all right, now take a break, you know, and then, and go back. So it's a lot of that. Okay. It's a lot of do a little bit of what you want to do. Then do a little bit of what I want you to do. Then take a break, repeat the process. Okay. So that is basically in a nutshell, how much you should practice. Okay. Just remember, use it or lose it, okay? Use it or lose it. And you're going to see a difference, parents. You're going to hear it. And the kid loves it. Once they get rolling, you can't stop them. Uh, and sometimes it, it's, it's actually pretty funny how it turns out. And, and it's pretty cute. So it um, doesn't matter. doesn't matter if you're 5 or 75. Um, the rules apply, okay? So practice should not be a negative, okay? Practice should not have a negative connotation, so that's what we're working on, um, and it, it, it doesn't really end, <laughs> but it, it can be helped. Um, so it, it took me, it took me longer than I'd like to admit that into, to get into a good practice technique, you know, especially when I was like 10, and then I'm thinking back, and I don't even remember practicing that much, but I know I did, right? So those memories kind of fade because it's muscle memory, okay? You're not going to remember every practice session, okay? If you're very <laughs> type A personality, you know, you can record every practice session, but if not, it's fine. So anyway, this was my second uh, attempt at this video. Again, I'm going to, I'm going to probably make it again for, for YouTube or something, but I'm just, I'm just sharing it today. Uh, so if you know anyone who's interested in lessons, their child or you as an adult student is fine. Um, just message me, let me know. Uh, please share this video and let me know if you have any questions. And I think that is it for now. Thank you guys. I hope you learned something. I hope it was helpful. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye.